Hey YouTubers, it's Neil here with Fix It Channel. Welcome to Half Done Hell, or maybe more accurately, Half Done Purgatory. We've got a, a million projects here that we're gonna be making videos on in the future. Uh, this riding mower needs engine gaskets and hydraulic rings. This uh, commercial walk behind mower, it needs, uh, what the heck does that one need? Needs to have the bottom oil pan taken off and have uh, a crack in it welded up. Plus general maintenance, this uh, unit's gonna need a whole tear down really. It's gonna need new mower spindles, grease fittings unplugged, so you will accept grease. Uh, tires, obviously everything's probably got a tire on it that needs some repairs, so we'll do some tire repair videos. And uh, what we got going on here is an extremely messy shop. We got uh, tools left here on the floor here from the job I just got done replacing the engine on my Honda. So I gotta get that cleaned up. And you just see we got just about an overwhelming amount of mess here. Got some other projects here. Got window box projects here for my uh, for my house. My wife wanted to have made. I'll show you how to do them now. Basically, just a box. I'm not gonna show you how to build a box. You can figure that out. But I will show you some finer points of how to connect it to the house. That's probably the trickiest part of the whole job. Over here, I got my uh, golf cart. Just got done putting a headlight kit in it and a rear seat kit. I wish I would have embarked on this uh, YouTube experience before I did some of these jobs because I think they would have been pretty interesting videos. But I do have to do one thing. I'm still going to put a radio on this overhead console up here. Uh, the light switch on this unit runs all the time, which is rather stupid because when are you going to run the headlights when the... Uh, when you're not running the machine, so that just doesn't make any sense at all. And then the radio is set up to run off the key switch. I, I'm gonna reverse that because I just all kinds of times where I wanna run the radio where I'm not running the cart. But I can't think of any time where I'd wanna run the headlights without running the cart. So that's a video coming up. I got a John Deere Gator here. All the tires on it leak. We're gonna have to fix those. And I'm gonna show you a pretty unique way of doing it. So that'll be kind of exciting. Um, got the old engine from the Honda. I gotta tear off all the good parts on that save. That's got a good head on it. It's just the block and internals are shot. And we got our log splitter. And I'm gonna come up with a couple really cool things to show you with that. Getting back to this godforsaken mess we see here. And this is a, kind of a classic example of what this channel is all about. How repair, maintenance, things like that, they tie in with life. There's so many parallels. And this is a classic example. We have an overwhelming mess here. And I know a lot of times in life, it can look like an overwhelming mess, life itself. But what you got to do is you got to just, at least in one area, pick your most important area. In this case, in this shed here, it's this is a mess and it slows everything down when you try to do something. So we're gonna get this cleaned up, come hell or high water, and that's the way it is in life. When you have something that you have to take care of, you can put it off, put it off, wait till the time's right. Well, guess what? The time's never gonna be right. What you do is you drop everything and come hell or high water, you take care of the problem. And let the chips fall where they may, but there's a thing you have to get done in life, get it done. So. That's what I gotta start on. I'm not gonna film me cleaning this shed. I can't think of a more boring video than that. But as I do it and I run across something interesting, I'll put it on camera. And uh, so I'll get my camera set up and then my homemade tripod here that I made out of a hockey puck and, and brake line. That's how cheap I am. It's too cheap to spend $10 on a tripod. But as time goes on, I'll probably get one of those too. Uh, just thought I'd show you this can crusher I made. Maybe for a fun project someday, I'll show you how to make one of those. All right, tip number one I got here as I clean up my shed. I see a lot of guys with their toolboxes and they'll have one set of wrenches all laid out 
one after another in a row on the bottom of the drawer. And they basically, one set of two wrenches is taking up their entire drawer. Screw that. You're, it doesn't have to be that organized. If you need to find, just say, let's say a 960s wrench, it really isn't all that hard. Look, you dig in it and grab it. Your toolbox real estate is too valuable to have your tools all spread out so you can see them all instantaneously at a glance. You can find a three-quarter wrench easy enough when it's in a pile of other wrenches that's approximately the same size. By the way, my wrench organizing system, this is a silverware holder my mom gave to me way back when I first got this toolbox in high school. And, uh, Jesus, it was the one we had used in our house since I was a kid. I'm certain it's from my parents' wedding, uh, probably wedding present in 1953, or one of the first things they bought when they got married. So it's quite old, and it's held up all this time. Uh, another pointer I have, and I, I, I'm guilty of this, don't let your toolbox become a junk drawer. Don't let any drawer become a junk drawer. It's for tools. Junk, you're probably better off throwing it in the garbage can, but if you, if you just can't bear to throw it away, put it in a cardboard box or whatever. You, you don't use toolbox real estate for junk. Here's another tip. Flashlights. The era of the incandescent flashlight is over. If you got them, that's where they belong. Now, the thing I've noticed about flashlights is they don't have any that aren't $2 pieces of shit, okay, or an $18 to $30 mag light. I guess they don't make a $7 flashlight that's worth a damn anymore. But you can get these LED flashlights so cheap. I just bought this set here. Got two headlights and four flashlights. Yeah, I paid 10 bucks for it. The great thing about that, they work. Uh, they're more dependable than any incandescent flashlight ever was. They're two bucks. If you lose them, who cares? Get yourself a set of them. Since these items are so close together, I think I'm going to touch on this. On, on your high expenditure tools or equipment, whatever you want to say, these are the big three. Get yourself an air compressor and get a good one. Get a good one. Unless you can't afford one or whatever, a little one is a lot better than none. I'll, I'll tell you that. So if, if all you got is one of those one horsepower wheel round type air compressors or a pancake air compressor, anything's better than nothing. But if you can swing it, get an air compressor. This one here, I got this back in like 1987. I was pretty young back then, you know. My buddies and stuff, you know, they'd go, go to Florida, you know, things like that. And they say, are you going to go like, hell no, hell no. You know, for the same amount of money, I bought this air compressor and I still got it. You know, their trip to Florida was gone in a week. So, you know, spend your money on things that last. It ends up being worth more than the money. Okay. You're at a welder. This is a great thing if you can get one. Uh, once again. As opposed to having nothing, get anything you can get. If you got a buddy that's going to give one to you, a relative that's going to give one to you, take what you can get. If you're going to buy one, it's worth every penny to get the ACDC one as opposed to just the AC. Uh, a, a torch setup. The, the torch itself is really cheap. The thing where you got to bite the bullet is, is on the tank lease. That's going to cost you about 300 bucks. Um, maybe even more nowadays, but once you got it, you got it. Um, Leasing the tanks is a better deal than owning your own tanks and having them filled. Uh, there's some people that think there's some advantage to owning your own tanks. When you lease them, you can just take them in and swap them out. You're in, you're out from the welding store, and it's a hell of a lot quicker. You always have tanks that are inspected and in good shape. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's the way to go. So your big three, your air compressor, your torch, and your welder, get them. MIG welder is also a great thing to have. I've always been able to get by with a stick welder. I can weld exhaust pipe. You know, I can't weld car body metal. Someday I'd like to get a MIG welder, but you can't have everything, right? And then as long as I'm here, another good investment on a large tool is a drill press. Here's my next item on tips as I come across as I'm cleaning up my shed. Uh, how much worthless crap are you going to keep on hand? You know, at some, you, this whole thing is a decision between hanging on to something and throw, or throwing it away. Now, that being said, 
Just because something's broke doesn't mean it doesn't have any value. Uh, a broken ruler like this, you can cut off the end of it to have a low clearance uh, measurement tool. The thing that comes to mind where that comes in handy is uh, measuring on a mower the height of the blades. Comes in damn handy for things like that. It doesn't take up much room. So when it comes to garbage like this, if it doesn't take up much room, uh, you might want to keep it. Something big like an old washing machine, get rid of that sucker. That's what makes you look like a hillbilly, having that crap laying around. One other item, welding helmets. You got the auto darkening lens. It's like everyone's going to the, these these days. They are actually pretty darn convenient. And then you have the traditional type, no battery required. Learn how to weld using one of these. For, for no other reason, if this goes to kaput, you can still use it. It's just like a traditional welding helmet. And you don't want to be dependent on having to use this type of helmet. Your battery burns out, you can't find it, all you got to lay around is one of these. Learn how to weld with one of these. It's well worth it. Here's another tip. Oh, piece of two inch PCB pipe and some fittings glued to the end. Make a pretty darn good th thing for short welding rods. Here's a tip. I saw on a video, I think his name is Chucky2009. He was showing this, in some cases it's more convenient to weld with a shorter welding rod or an electrode, which they're actually properly called, than it is with a long one when you're doing the clearance issues or you need to have really good control. But, and he, he showed how you could take one of these welding rods and cut it in half and make two short ones. Okay, great. But, I think he's missing the obvious. Why don't you just, when you're welding sometimes, when you get down to half a rod, save that half rod and, and store it away. That way you don't have to go through the work of cutting a welding rod. All right, here's another thing. Who doesn't have this? You know, 8,000 of these drill indexes where half the bits are missing, the other half are broke or dull, and then you got these worthless ejected molded plastic drill bit indexes that only hold about one quarter as many drill bits as it should for the size. These things are freaking worthless. Okay, but I did take time to go through my drill bits and sharpen them and kind of get them in order. And these drill indexes are just such a pain in the ass to open up, get the drill bit out. I finally went and got a magnetic strip and I bolted it to uh, this piece of, uh, it's just a piece of tin from an old fluorescent light. And uh, I can just put the magnetic strip on there and then I just put the drill bit uh, it's just a store, handy way to store a drill bit. They're easy to get. It's easy to see what you have. You're going to end up having, if you do any amount of work, you're going to end up having a whole bunch of drill bits. Uh, these drill indexes, yeah, they're great for when you start out. But what you're going to find is there's all kinds of drill bits. You're not going to sizes you're not going to use. The sizes you use most, obviously, will be quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, etc. But you're also going to be using the next size larger than, than that. So when you're drilling a hole in steel to put a bolt in, you have enough clearance to get the bolt in. A lot of times things don't line up. So if you're using a 3 8 bolt, you're not going to drill a 3 8 hole. The other thing you're going to do, use a lot is the size, the size smaller than quarter inch, 5 16ths, uh, 3 8 etc. For tapping a hole. So you should have a number of them. So... You don't need every size throughout 64 from, you know, eighth inch to a half an inch. What you need are the sizes you're going to use a lot. So after you get a drill index, you might want to go to a place where you can buy your bits one at a time and get the ones, several of the ones you really need. Oil squirt cans. These things are too cheap not to buy one for each type of oil that you use frequently. This one here I got filled with just your normal 30 weight oil. This one here I got filled with cut, thread cutting oil. And this one here I have filled with the world's best penetrating uh, uh, substance, 50-50 uh, mixture of acetone and uh, automatic transmission fluid. This is about the most effective thing I've ever found for penetrating oil, that 50-50 that, uh, mix. Uh,